What is up? You are checking out the world of WWE podcast. I am Ant, and I'm joined by Le Champion. Le Champion. Chris. Nah, I'm joking. I was going to say Chris Jericho because I love him so much, but nope. It's Macho Man, man. Dig it. You have two. You now have two. I have two personalities, damn it. Le Champion, Macho Man, Dan. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so thank you for checking us out. We we are the World of WWE podcast. We are giving you everything WWE related, and tonight we have a very special episode for you all. This is our special Royal Rumble episode. The Royal Rumble will be coming to us live on January 29th. It's a Saturday, and to get us prepared, and I think this is gonna be like the first Royal Rumble to be ever hosted on a fucking Saturday. I think it is. Yeah, you're right. Or was last year Saturday, too? No, nah, last year was a Sunday. Oh, I feel like they're making a move to Sun Saturday now, it seems. For all pay-per-views, pretty much, yeah. For everything. But, so, to get us excited for the Royal Rumble, we have compiled a list of the 30 greatest Royal Rumble matches of all time. Not actual Royal Rumble matches, but matches that took place on a Royal Rumble card. We also have special countdowns and more for you. But to start off, I want to thank you all for checking us out. If you're listening to us on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you're checking us out on a streaming platform, whether it's Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, thank you for checking us out. So, 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 so. The champion. Let's start off with our countdown. Now, there's also going to be a YouTube video to follow with just the matches. So, I'm going to say the matches, and there will be an accompanying video coming out as well. So, you can just watch that video as well if you want to see the matches too. So, all right. How and, caring, Anthony. How caring for the people. So, Coming in at number 30, this match comes from the Royal Rumble 2006, and it is the WWE champion Edge with Lita defending the title against John Cena. These two, you already know, have a huge rivalry. In this point in time, Edge defeated John Cena at New Year's Revolution. He cashed in his money in the bank. And this was Edge's first title defense against John Cena. It was a really good match. Of course, there was involvement from Lita. And I, out of the matches on this list, this is one of my favorites. But it did come in at number 30, John Cena versus Edge. Dan, do you have any uh, thing to say on that one? I mean, it was definitely a really good match from what I remember. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Okay, now coming at number 29. From the Royal Rumble 2008, the WWE Champion Randy Orton defending the title against Jeff Hardy. I had never seen this match before. And I have. You have? Oh, dude, I was pleasantly surprised. It was really, really good. Uh, I enjoyed the shit out of it. It was good to see Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton go that way. And it was funny because I didn't know that Randy, up until that point, still had his old theme song not the voices at this point. So that was interesting. It was still light in my head or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So, yes, that match is number 29. Royal Rumble 2008, Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton. Coming in at number 28 from 2016, the last man standing match for the Intercontinental Championship, Kevin Owens taking on Dean Ambrose. This is a hellacious fight. Tables. Chairs, nonstop action through the barricade. Oh, that match was amazing. Definitely. I, I, honestly, that even though it was the first match on the card, it set the whole show up. Like honestly, there was not a match that could follow besides the Royal Rumble. So I think it should have happened before that. But that's me. And then I also find it funny because Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens both went on the Royal Rumble match after that hellacious match. Yep, they sure did. It was it was a hell. I remember watching it. And I was like, "Damn, they're gonna WWE is gonna get more extreme." Yeah, did not right. happen. Moving on, twenty seven. This match is one that I bet not a lot of you have seen before. It's from the Royal Rumble, nineteen ninety one. 
the big boss man taking on the barbarian with Bobby the Brain Heenan. Now, this match isn't well known, but it was a good match for the time. Two big behemoths going at it. And it wasn't a long match, but it was good to see that even though these two big men were big, they were able to go really fast in the ring, just throwing each other around. It's definitely a match that I would check I'm out. just saying right now, Anthony, you sound like Vince McMahon. I like me some big sweaty men. Listen, I didn't say I like them. I said there's a lot. <laughs> I'm just saying. that for dude. Vince. <laughs> All right, yes, he did enjoy that match, probably. All right, number 26 from the Royal Rumble 2019, the Raw Women's Champion, Ronda Rousey, defending against the boss, Sasha Banks. This was a match that I watched live and I really enjoyed, and recently watching it back, I thought they had a great match. Sasha Honestly, I watched it live, but I don't remember really anything from that match. Dude, Sasha was... I'm sure Carlos would be fucking yelling at me right now. Like, how could you forget about Sasha? Because, yeah, you're on his bad side now. No, it was a really good match. I'm not going to lie. But Sasha was very uh, relentless, like, kicking Ronda's hand when she had her in the bank statement. And Dude, Ronda... Bank, uh, freaking Ronda was in, like, WWE for, what, a year? Yeah. Yeah, so I definitely recommend that one. Moving on, number 20... Five, the Royal Rumble, 1993. The Intercontinental Champion, Shawn Michaels, defending against Mari Gennetti. And this is the first time these two had met in the ring since Shawn Michaels threw Mari Gennetti through the glass on the barbershop on Saturday night's main event in 1992. It was a great match because it's the first, one of the first outings of, well, not really the first, it was a year after, but uh, Shawn Michaels is the heartbreak kid seeing him with the mullet and Marty Jannetty <laughs> is really good too it and was the start of a really classic career but it was he and really, like when he really showed him off sensational Sherry definitely plays a role in this match too Hall of Famer so check that one out now we're going to take a quick break from our countdown and we have another special countdown to go over this countdown, Dan and I just compiled, and it is our list for the top 10 surprise entrances in the Royal Rumble match. Now, and, okay, let me be clear. Sorry, not just the Royal Rumble match, but anybody who appeared on the Royal Rumble that we thought was significant, okay? So, coming in at number 10 for the biggest surprise entrances, Mick Foley. He returned in 2004 after Randy Orton tossed him down the steps at Madison Square Garden and completely destroyed him. Mick Foley showed up, threw Randy Orton over the top rope, and got prepared for to see the Rock and Sock connection come back at Madison Square Garden to take on Evolution at WrestleMania 20. Anytime you see Mick Foley in the ring, it's a treat. So that is number 10. I mean, hey, he is known as the hardcore legend. Definitely is. 100%. Number Nine from 2021, Christian. He came back for a minute, came in the Royal Rumble, had a great moment where he and Edge sort of looked at each other and, you know, signaled their brotherhood, I guess you could say. But unfortunately, he left, well, not really unfortunately, he left WWE and moved on down to AEW where he competes to this day. But it was not It was very close to seeing the Royal Rumble match because, you know, I hadn't thought that we'd see Christian forever. So it was great to see him come back. Well, it was definitely also a surprise because, I mean, no, everybody thought he retired completely from wrestling and he was never really going to do it again. Yeah. yeah, he was doing that WWE backstage and that was it. Definitely a shocker to see him, though. And it was definitely an awesome moment. Yes. All right. Moment number eight. Surprise entrance from 2018. Trish Stratus. When Trish came out, I like dropped to the. He floor. marked out. I was so excited to see her after seeing Lita, Beth Phoenix, the Bella Twins, so many others: Kelly Kelly, Michelle McCool, Jacqueline, Molly Holly, Jesus Christ, so many. But Trish Stratus stands out because she is my favorite of all time, and she's still. Ah, yes. Wait, what? What? I said bias, my what? Well, listen, I have to be biased when it comes to Trish. There's nothing wrong with Trish. So I was excited to see her. It was good to kind of see her go against uh, Sasha Banks a little bit. 
and it was interesting to see how the fans reacted when Trish and Mickey faced off. It was a good nostalgia for me. Number tw- seven from 2015, Bubba Ray Dudley. The oh. Dudley Boys left WWE in 2004. Or, I'm sorry, sorry. Wait, was it? Yeah, it was 2004. I think it was 2004, yeah. They left in 2004 and weren't seen since. And then in 2015, Bubba Ray Dudley came out. And you're like, damn, Devon, get the tables. He did come back for a little bit to feud with the Usos and the New Day. However, it was short-lived, and they both left WWE shortly after. But it was great to see someone from the Attitude Era in 2015. It was definitely a shame that they stopped, but I mean, hey, it was a great run while it lasted, I guess. Yeah. Number six from 2008, Rowdy Roddy Piper. This is a special one because they were in Madison Square Garden for the 2008 edition of the Royal Rumble, and Roddy Piper had teared up the house in New York City. And it was just a great surprise to see him come back. He looked great. And yeah, it was just a great nostalgia to see someone from the 80s and Madison Square Garden was just kind of magic in that moment. So, number six, Rowdy. Did he Rowdy actually – was he in Royal Rumble before that? Yeah, of course he's been in Royal Rumbles before, but he made a surprise. Like, this. the reason why this one is specific is important is because this well, is – Well, yeah, I know he returned it. I'm just saying, like, I, I swear I don't remember him in any other, like, Royal Rumble matches before that. That's just what I'm saying. Oh, no. He's been in, like, the 1992. Like, he's been in a lot. Uh, huh. No, yeah, he's been in a lot. This one was just cool because he was in Madison Square Garden again. All right, moving on to number five, surprise entrances. Number five is 2018 Ray Mysterio. Now, Ray had been gone from the company for a while, and to see him come back, it was very cool and exciting because Ray Mysterio is one of my favorite. And he's still in the company till this day. And he has been confirmed to be the cover star of WWE 2K22. That would be very fun playing out his matches. That would be very fun. So, yeah. Yes, Ray Mysterio is one of my favorites. So it was very cool to see him come back. And I was like, yes, Booyaka, Booyaka. I was like very, very, very excited. He was marking out. I really was. All right, number four. Technically, this person was not in the Royal Rumble match. However, it was very surprising to see her from 2018, Ronda Rousey. We all were waiting for her to show up during the match because there was rumors that she was going to show up. And then the match Never ended. Happened. But and then she came back again. I think it would have been better if they just can't, had her come on. Win the yeah, I'm playing, but that's no, but I will tell you, see, I'm glad that she did it because – they would have annihilated her because she's not a real wrestler up at like she is, but like in professional wrestling eyes, in that point, like in their in their eyes, um, you know, I don't think she would have deserved it. I'm glad I'm I'm glad that she showed up later because you're kind of like, okay, what is she gonna do? You know, she walks out, she looks at Alexa Bliss, she looks at Charlotte. Alexa Bliss. It was uh are you sure Alexa Bliss? Yeah, yep. Alexa Bliss was the champion in 2018, and Charlotte Flair, Alexa was the Raw Women's Champion, and Charlotte was the SmackDown. Remember Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax fought at WrestleMania that year? Because remember Don't Alexa and Mickey were calling her fat, and she was the goddess. Don't remember that, uh, but okay. Wow, you really I'm losing I'm losing that. my memory, okay? Oh my god, Nia Jax is like freaking out backstage because she caught them calling her fat and like making fun of her. Okay, yeah, anyway, I don't know. Nia Jax moment I remember is something I'll mention in a few minutes. Yeah, well, the funniest part for me is that we went from Ronda Rousey to this, but it was good to see Ronda Rousey. She did have a great couple of matches. She did become Royal Women's Champion and main event WrestleMania, so it was great to see her show up now we are in our top three royal rumble surprise entrances this one is one of my favorite surprises from 2016 the phenomenal aj styles growing up in the 2000s you knew tna and wwe AJ Styles is a through and through TNA guy. He had he competed maybe once on Sunday Night Heat in two thousand and one, 
and then he was off with NWATNA in 2002. I actually remember watching the 2016 Royal Rumble, and, like, at the time, I didn't really watch other companies. I only really knew about WWE. Like, I knew about other companies. I never watched it. I remember watching. I was like, who the fuck is this? No, dude, it was a big deal for me because AJ Styles, like, you know, kind of like how AEW, like Jungle Boy, MJF, those are the AEW guys. Like, imagine in 10 years, I don't know, MJF shows up in the Royal Rumble match. You're going to be like, what? Like, so- well, like, I, am, I understand why he was big. I understand that. It's just like, it, fun fact, it was actually, AJ was the reason, like, why I really started watching other companies. When I saw how good he was, I was like, wow, okay. I kind of want, I got to start watching these other companies if, if they came from there. Definitely you know, check out his match against Christopher Daniels and Samoa Joe at Unbreakable 2004. Oh, I've never even watched it. I'm just saying. Dude, it is. Anyways, it is. I was very excited to see him. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, and he's still wrestling today. I wish that he was doing more right now. But the phenomenal one, he definitely changed the business showing up in WWE. The Forbidden Door. All right. Number two, surprise entrance from 2008. John Cena. Now, John was injured. He was supposed to be out for like nine months, but no, you can't stop the Cena. You can't here. keep down Super Cena. Not at all. He showed up and he surprised everybody and the garden like blew off and everybody was on their feet when John Cena showed up again. It was exciting to see him. I always was a John Cena fan. I know that's pretty controversial, but... Yeah, so I was excited to see John Cena in 2008. So we made it. We are at number one all the way back in 2020. On this day, I can see clearly that Edge is our number one pick for This list is biased, just so you know, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what was your who, – who is your number one, Dan? What was my list? <laughs> you know? Honestly, it was way back on the list. I would have gone with Christian, in my opinion. Christian, really? Yeah. Really? I mean, hey, that's just me. Okay. Either okay. him or AJ, honestly. I would have picked him or AJ. So, well, the reason why I'm going with Edge, like, I listen, I would agree with you on Christian. The only reason why, for me, I'm, I'm different is because he left. No, it's because you're biased. But, no, I understand where you're coming from. It was definitely a surprise. I mean, to think, Edge had triple fusion neck surgery. People thought if he took one bump, he would die. Dude. I cried during that stupid video package when he couldn't wrestle anymore. Like, you know, it, it was a, it was always like, oh, is he going to come back? Is he gonna, he's never going to come back. And then boom, he's back. So I, for me, I was very excited. I mean, there was a big rumor. I was like, I would love to see it. But like, I, I honestly believed it too. I was like, dude, I really fucking hope so. You're not a really easy to believe. Thing. I mean, it just, was just a big, huge figure in the fucking Attitude Era, and and part in the uh, freaking um, not not what did I say? I meant ruthless aggression era, and he was a bit a bit of a part in the uh, Attitude Era. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I got my words mixed up. Um, no, you're good. Yes, so that is our list for our top ten surprise entrances, and now we are going to go back to our list of the greatest Rumble matches. Coming in at number 24, this match goes back to the first Royal Rumble. It is for the Women's Tag Team Championships, the Glamour Girls with Jimmy Hart taking on the Jumping Bomb Angels. And if you really want to see racist Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon does not know the names of the Japanese wrestlers. And she refer- and he refers to them as Angel with the Red Trunks and Angel with the Pink Trunks. So... um yeah, but anyways, this match was very good. It was a trajectory falls match. Racist. For... <laughs> what happened? I said Vince McMahon is racist. Yeah, he's fucking nuts. But yeah, this is a good match, especially for 1988. The women were really going crazy, doing some cool moves. And for 1988, it was really good. So check that out. Number 24, Jumping Bomb Angels versus the Glamour Girls. Moving on to number 26. Or wait, 26. What am I talking about? I need to go. Yeah. 23. Oh, wait. There we go. 23. Here I am. I'm like losing count of where my stuff is. Okay, here we go. All right. Yes. 23 from 2019. The WWE champion, Daniel Bryan, defending against the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. 
this was a great match between the two. Of course, there was some interference at the end, but until that point, it was a good technical match. AJ Styles, AJ Styles, AJ Styles put up a good fight, and Daniel Bryan, of course, did as well. I won't tell you who won, but it was a great match. Number twenty-two. This is also from two thousand and eight. It's for the World Heavyweight Championship. The World Heavyweight Champion Edge defending against Rey Mysterio. This is a good match because Edge and Rey have great chemistry. They teamed together back in two thousand and two. And this rivalry was made even more personal with Chavo Guerrero and Vicky Guerrero siding with Edge and, of course, getting involved in this match. You do have a moment where you see Vicky Guerrero take a 619 bump. So if you want to see Vicky Guerrero get knocked out, check that out. I mean, shit, I love that. That's probably my, my favorite moment of the match. We'll be seeing her getting fucked up, yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me, yeah. All I right, can't so. do that with my voice. I can't go that high. And if I do, it's going to be a huge voice crack. I ain't doing that. All right. Number 21 from Royal Rumble 2001. The Tag Team Champions Edge and Christian defending against the Dudley Boys. This is Tag Team Perfection. The heels worked over the faces. The faces were able to make a comeback. I won't tell you who won, but it definitely was a great match to start off the Royal Rumble and kick off one of the better Royal Rumbles in the Attitude Era. Moving on to number 20. At the end of the Attitude Era, if you think about it. Yeah, pretty. Well, no, the Attitude Era. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. The end of the Attitude Era. You're correct. All right. It was like a year or two at the end of the uh, Attitude Era. You are correct. All right. Number 20, going back to 2019, the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar defending against Finn Balor. Finn Balor put up a valiant effort. He had a huge, like, there were many moments in the match where I thought Brock would lose. Again, I won't give you any spoilers, but Balor put up a huge fight in Lesnar. There are a couple of times where I thought Lesnar was going to lose, so check that one out as well. All right, we're going to take another quick break, and we're going to go to Dan. Just give us... Give the people what they Give the people what they want. Give me, like, one or two facts that you think are important for the people to know about the Royal Rumble. Well, I, I mean, know. I know this is a bit overset, but, I mean, come on. You can't deny people facts. I mean, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin won the uh, Royal Rumble three times. The only person to ever do that, by the way. What was it? Nine, the 97, 98, and the 2001 Royal Rumble? Yes, you are correct, my man. And I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar are tied with the most eliminations with 13 men. Not in the yeah, same Royal Rumble, of course, Coke but... While we record this. <laughs> I no, I, I apologize. I, I've been feeling under the weather, weather a little bit recently, so... My nose is still kind of, like, stuffed up and everything. I feel like shit, guys. I don't feel like, well, I don't feel like complete shit. It's just my fucking nose is just, like, fucking stuff to help. Macho Man's dion has got a date. All <laughs> right. Lady Jane Beyond, go ahead. I already, let's see. What, what's one of the good facts? Well, here's one that I saw here about Batista. He won the Royal Rumble match the same spot, number 28, twice. That's interesting. We don't really have too many facts here because in a, next week on Raw, you're going to hear, here are the facts about the Royal Rumble. So you're, Yeah, I mean, WWE all. kind of does that for us. So Let's go back to the countdown. So coming in at number 19, we're going to the Royal Rumble 2009, a no disqualification match for the WWE Championship. The champion Jeff Hardy defending against Edge with, of course... La Familia, well, he was uh-huh. with Guerrero. And this is a great match, too, because we got to see both men who already have a storied rivalry go out. Yeah, but that was, it was a very um, shady ending of that match, in my opinion. I'm trying to see. It was the one where... Oh, yes, 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 yes. Great yes. WrestleMania match, shitty storyline. There's definitely a twist of fate in that match. Um, yeah. Hmm. 
Okay, number oh, eight. Oh, no. Matt, uh, Matt hit Jeff with the chair. That's all he Well, you were. I mean, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Why, 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 why. Oh, <laughs> right. I didn't say he won. I just said he turned against him. True. Okay. True, true, true. true. I right, mean, come on. Here. If you don't really know the storyline, it ain't my fault. Well, Dan is the late champion. We're going to go. He set the rules. I'm going to follow. All right. Number 18, 2019. Again, Asuka taking on Becky Lynch. And this was, they competed again in 2020. But this match was amazing. I don't know how Becky ended up going to the Royal Rumble match later in the night, but. Um, uh, she took, I think she took Lana out. If I remember. Oh no, her. yeah, she really did. But I mean, like, because of the amount of like, like stress that put on her. Body. Oh, 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 oh. Yep. I All forget. Right. Did she pull in as champion and lose? I forget. I think she. I think she. Uh, no, Asuka is champion because she won at TLC, and then um, she won the TLC match because Ronda Rousey. Uh, right. Well, yeah. Becky won after that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. So number seventeen, we're going to two thousand. The Dudley's boys versus the Hardy boys in a tables match. And what was great about this match was you saw tables, ladders, and chairs involved. Uh, there were just so many great moves. And this is right again, almost at the end of the Attitude Era, but it was right in the middle of it, and it was great. Number 16, 2014, Bray Wyatt with the Wyatt family taking on Daniel Bryan. Another great match. This match opened the card, and uh, it set the tone for the pay-per-view as a whole. Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt went at it for a long time and were just amazing in this match. All right, number 15, 2013, the WWE champion CM Punk defending against The Rock. Now, with this one, you kind of knew who was going to win, but it was great to see The Rock back in action against CM Punk, and they actually did have a pretty good match. So definitely check that one out. Moving right along. Number 14 from 2011, Edge defending the World Heavyweight Championship against Dolph Ziggler with Vicky Guerrero. Edge was not allowed to use the spear, so he had to be very creative in this match. And it was very good. Also, Dolph Ziggler in his prime. Definitely check that one out. In his prime? I think he was more in his early days. Well, that's what I mean. Well, yeah, I guess that's what I meant. Sorry, early days. Sorry. This is like him just being really good. All right. Number 13, Royal Rumble 1999. The Rock versus Mankind in an I Quit match. Mankind wins the Royal Rumble as champion. And this match is not for the weak of heart. These two, The Rock nailed. They tore the house down. They totally did tear the house down. The Rock nailed Mankind so many times with cheer shots that it was just insane. It looked brutal. It really was. His kids were there. It was not fun. Uh, and I definitely recommend checking that one out. So we are going to take a quick break and we're going to do a quick advertisement and then we are going to come back and we are going to finish our list. We have more countdowns to give you. We are just getting started, started, started. We are just getting started. Stay tuned. And welcome back. Yes, make sure that you check us out on Anchor. It is the best platform to create your own podcast for free. This is what we use, and I definitely recommend checking it out. But back to our Royal Rumble countdown. We are now on match 12, and this match is from the Royal Rumble in 1995. Big Daddy Cool Diesel defending his WWE Championship against Brett, the Hitman Hart. And this match was pretty good because they both were not just like technically fighting, they were actually like outside throwing each other into the guard railing. There was a steel chair that became involved in one point. And it was interesting to see the new generation do a match like this. Both men were at the top of their game in 1995 and it definitely was a match worth watching. So, 
We are now moving on to number, where are we? 11. And that one comes to you from Royal Rumble 2010, the World Heavyweight Champion, The Undertaker, defending against Rey Mysterio. These two had really great chemistry, although Rey is like five foot two and Undertaker is like six ten. Rey was able to do a lot of cool high flying moments. And of course, Undertaker was able to use his power and strength to potentially overcome Rey Mysterio. Do you guys remember the well, Dan, do you remember this one? Um I do remember, but, like, I only remember, like, certain, like, I remember, like, when he went for the 619 all that. That's really what I remember. Mm. I saw it um, live. I mean, it wasn't, like, the greatest match I ever saw, but, like, I do like when I see Rey Mysterio go against, like, the big guys, like, you know, like, oh, my God, is he going to be able to do it? Is he going to beat him, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. All right. All definitely right. was a good match. It definitely was. I agree. Well. We, can, we are finally at our top 10 matches. And here at the World of WWE Podcast, we are like a family here. And we, Le Champion and I, cannot do our countdown, our top 10, without the help of... Our main of man, Carlos. Mr. Oh, hello. Heat. What is up? What is up? What up? What up? Not too much, guys. It's good to hear from you. We've missed you. Last we talked, I think, was the, our Raw recap. So how are you doing? I'm good, guys. Just been getting over a cold, but I'm you know. Well, I'm glad that you know you're healthy and safe, and you know we're on the road to Royal Rumble, man. You got a predicament. Your two favorites, Reigns and Rob. Yeah. We're gonna get. A lot of things are happening. He has to choose. A lot of I think things are I happening. know who he picked already. I think I have a little spoiler, which I'm not gonna share. He'll have to drop it, but I'm happy to know. I think. Dun, dun, dun. I think you've already said it, though, too, on here. So, I mean, <laughs> he probably has. But no, I think th- th- things, might be, things might be changing back and forth. But, uh, oh. There's still, there's still two weeks. There's still two weeks. All right. So, I guess you'll have to uh, There's to actually our... a week. Yeah. A week. Yep. Well, you have to change into our Royal Rumble prediction episode. So, it's next week, then? It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's next week. Yeah. Holy crap. I'm so... Yep. And our friend here, uh, Le Jambion, actually has himself a date. It might not be. Oh, uh, come on. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. That's not confirmed. Okay. It's not confirmed on what day. It's not confirmed on if it's the Royal Rumble day or not. So, well, that might be a bit behind. It might just be me and you, my man. It might be okay, just you. Man. Y'all better not freaking uh, spoil anything as of last year like you did to Anthony Carlos. <laughs> did we ever tell... Wait, did, Anthony, did you ever tell that story to the people? I, did I, I, how did I spoil you? I probably did. Well, okay, so I picked Edge to win. Well, as we all know, last year, Edge won the Royal Rumble. And as we all know, (laughs) Edge is one of, if not Anthony's favorite of all time. Yep. And Carlos says, he goes, you're really going to be happy. Because he wasn't watching it at that time. He was busy. No, no, I did not say that. That was the Raw before the Royal Rumble. I said because he announced that he was going to be in it. And then and then that's when I said that you'll probably be really going to be happy he's in it. I'm telling you, I didn't, I didn't spoil the winner. You, I spoiled like the winner. It was like at 7 o'clock in the morning. You had sun on sh- <laughs> Really? Yes. I don't even remember. <laughs> But yeah, you, you you didn't mean. I really don't think you meant to. But you uh, you just actually like, happened. Happen. It just happened. Yeah, maybe, maybe I don't remember. It's all right. It's all right. Well, spoiler. I don't know what you're talking about. Spoiler alert, y'all! The Royal Rumble is coming to you on January 29th, and again, this is our Royal Rumble special episode. We're gearing no, up for no the spoiler Rumble. alert. No spoilers. Yes, no spoilers. Uh, by the way, Carlos. Well, I told, actually, no. Anthony has a bit of a spoiler. I, well, I don't know if I should tell. It that. No. Well, this is our plan, Dan. You're ruining our plan. It's a spoiler. It's a spoiler. I'll take a spoiler. <laughs> we'll save it. We'll, we'll uh, save it. I'll take a spoiler. I'll take a spoiler. Well, we don't want to ruin it for the other people if they don't want to hear. We'll maybe okay. tell you off the air, Carlos. Okay. Okay. It has to do with the Rumble it match, might, is what I will say. It might be a rumor, though, right? It's, huh? It, yeah, it's, it's considered a leak, is what I will say. 
is it does it something have to do with like a, a some sort of a forbidden door oh i will say is that it has to do with the entrance in the royal rumble match something oh. was leaked okay and so for I some reason see. anthony whenever whenever it. whenever things are leaked that means they're going to change it they're going to change it right away <laughs> Well, the only thing I will say, though, to counteract that, and I know it's different, but AEW, Tony Khan, he accidentally leaked the whole, like, match card for full gear, and every match was what he had, like, written out. That's it. It doesn't have charge. to do with the match. It basically has to do with, like, the, the entrance, like, the number and the people in the match. I didn't see much. It's only just, one person. It's only yeah. one person. I just know supposedly the leak tells you who entrant number one is. For the men and women's or just the men? Just the men's. Just the men's. Okay. okay. All right. No, that's not how much of a big Okay. Maybe I'll reveal that in our prediction episode. That's what I'll Maybe. So check out. Oh, tell me up there. Tell me up there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now that Carlos is here, let's go down to our top 10 Royal Rumble matches of all time. Number 10, this match comes from 1991 all the way back to before I was born. The Orient Express with Mr. Fuji taking on the Rockers. And this was the Rockers, obviously the team of Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. These two teams had a great tag team match for the early 90s. A lot of the stuff back then was kind of slow paced and more about like the rough and tough powerhouses. But these two teams had a great tag match to kick off the pay-per-view High flying maneuvers, a lot of near falls, and it definitely is a tag match worth the watch. And I'm pretty sure you guys have never seen it, and that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. So, number nine. This match comes from the 1994 Royal Rumble pay per view, and it is the WWF Tag Team Champions, the Quebecers, defending against Brett and Owen Hart. This match was famous because it was the match where Owen Hart attacked Bret Hart, leading to their infamous rivalry throughout 1994 into 1995. And uh, pretty much in the match, Bret accidentally bumps into Owen, and uh, Owen is not happy with the outcome of the match, and he ends up attacking his own brother. So for historical reference, that's a good one to check out, too. It's always good to good heel turn. Yeah, it, he like clipped him in the knee and then turned super duper heel. All right, no, number eight. This one comes from the 1998 Royal Rumble. And it's for the WWE Championship, a casket match. The WWE Champion Shawn Michaels defending against The Undertaker. And these two were going at it since the summer of 1997 when Shawn Michaels nailed The Undertaker with a chair by accident, causing him the WWE title. The two would then go on to fight in the first ever Hell in a Cell match in October 1997. Kane debuted there, kind of helped out Shawn Michaels by choke slamming his brother. And now these two are going to finally go at it in a casket match. Only way to win. Isn't this the one that also got Shawn Michaels, like, like shortened his career? Yes, this is where early on in the match, Shawn Michaels takes a backdrop and his like lower back lands on the edge of the casket. However, this was, he was like he was never the he was never the same after that. I remember him all like like during the time that I was watching, he was always complaining about like, back injuries and all that. So that's where yeah. that. And the cool wow. thing about this, that I didn't know, was I I initially thought that like this happened later on in the match. This happened like right away. He continued the match with a hurt back. So. Also, this match is famous for seeing the casket light up on fire. I won't tell you who's in it, uh, but Kane comes out and definitely makes an impact. So that is your number eight Royal Rumble match. All right, we're going to do two more, and then we're going to talk about some other things. So match number seven from 2001, the WWE Intercontinental Championship on the line in a ladder match. The Intercontinental Champion Chris Benoit taking on Chris Jericho. And these two were going at it since the summer of 2000. And now they were going to finally sell their score in a ladder match for the title. 
so many different maneuvers were used. There's a very cool moment that is used a lot where Chris Jericho has Chris Benoit on the top of the ladder and he puts him in the walls of Jericho. And it, I know there's controversy with Chris Benoit. However, you can't deny his talent in the ring. And these two had a great match for kind of close, almost the end of the Attitude Era. But definitely check out that one. All right, this one I know you guys have seen. Match number six from 2017. John oh. Cena taking oh, on the, the one where he won his 16th world championship. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Well, John I mean, you guys just totally awesome. spoiled it, but it's okay. Well, I mean, come on. It's very iconic. If you Listen, haven't AJ seen Styles. that, that's not my fault. I feel like I feel like AJ Styles from the best out of John Cena and, like, out of everybody that John Cena's ever, not I mean, ever fought, but, like, this was John yeah. Cena and AJ Styles' last match against each other. They went against each other at Money in the Bank and SummerSlam. And John Cena finally beat AJ Styles. That Which was one was the one that, uh, that AJ took from John Cena's wristband and like, was walking around with SmackDown? Mm-hmm. I think that was it. SummerSlam. That was Money in the Bank, one of them. Wait, which one? He's asking about when Styles took Cena's armband and was like, you know, taunting him and putting it on. And oh yeah, that was SummerSlam. <laughs> I think it was SummerSlam. This one was good because you really didn't know who was gonna win. It was a pretty long match. A lot of back. I remember me and me and back back in like the older days. Me and me and you didn't watch a lot of watching that. Mm-hmm. He did. It was a, yep, it was a really good match, and I did recently rewatch it, and I still enjoyed it. I'm surprised it's not in the top five, but it is a great, phenomenal part in the pun match. Definitely want to see better matches than I've ever had. Yeah, and as Dan said, this is John Cena's 16th. Was it? Be- but, yeah. it, but it, was just, it was just kind of sad because he had a, he had a, he had a short reign. But, you know, yeah, was, he, yeah, it was only for like a month total. But, he lost, but then he lost it to Bray Wyatt. Then Bray Wyatt lost it to Bray Wyatt. Well, technically he lost it in the Elimination Chamber match. He didn't specifically lose it to Bray Wyatt. But Bray well, Wyatt. Him, though, I think with AJ Styles and Ken John Cena, right? In the, huh? in the Elimination Chamber match. Was it? Uh, uh, no, it might have been AJ who eliminated him, but I know AJ was the last guy in there with Wyatt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Anyways, uh, back to the Royal Rumble. Rumble. Well, now, speaking of the Royal Rumble, we are going to go over our favorite Royal Rumble winners. So, some basic information for this one. You're going to pick a Royal Rumble winner from both the men's and the women's Royal Rumble match. There's no criteria. It could be because you really like this wrestler. It could be because you know how long they were in the match. It, it doesn't, you know, it could be anything. Maybe it could be, you know, how successful they were after they won the Rumble. Whatever criteria you have, just let the people know your favorite Royal Rumble winners. I will let Le Champion go first. All right, so my f- I'm going to go with the women's first. And this is a little bit of a hard one because there wasn't very many people to choose from. There's been, what, Asuka, Charlotte, Asuka, Becky, Becky, Charlotte, and Bianca. It. Yep. Oh, yep. and Bianca, you're right, yep. and Bianca. Yep. Well, if you know me, we know you know Bianca. I hate Charlotte. <laughs> and Charlotte. You know I hate Bianca. Asuka never did it for me. So, you know, I got to go with uh, one of my girls, Becky Lynch. Okay. She's right. definitely one. She's definitely my favorite women's Royal Rumble winner. Big time bet. And plus, right. and plus uh, Becky winning the Rumble and then going on to WrestleMania to win I mean, not just one world title, but both world titles. Oh, oh that yeah. was fucking great. And, sending and plus, she wasn't even scheduled Rousey. to be in the Royal Rumble match. Yeah. Which was even cool. And she said, and she said, Ronda Rousey packing. Yeah, she sure did. Yep. So happy. And then for my favorite male, this one is also hard because, well, there's so many people. I think there was like what thirty people. 
something like that, 20 something around there. Um, there's a lot, but I definitely got to go with Shawn Michaels, man. Shawn Michaels, he went in as number, I think he's the only person to go in as number one and number two and still win for the Royal Rumble match. And he also won it back to back, too, if I remember correctly. Uh, he won it. Yeah. I know he won it twice. He won it in 95 and 96. So yeah, back to back. back. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And All also, right. if if you remember correctly, the most iconic spot for me, at least in the Royal Rumble, is to see Shawn Michaels just dangling from the bottom rope, trying to keep both, trying to keep only one foot on the ground. Uh, dangling. I mean, life. great, great uh, person to win the Royal Rumble. I mean, that was just my opinion, though. Then you, and then one of them, he went on to go face Brett the Hitman Hart at which one? I think it was twelve. Yeah, you're correct, my man. Yeah, in the Iron Man match, classic Iron Man. Well, uh, there you go for mine. Real great picks. I mean, Shawn Michaels Hall of Famer. Becky Lynch is gonna be a future Hall of Famer. Good picks, champion. You are the champion for a reason. Damn right. Only for a couple for another week. Uh, Dan. <laughs> we'll see. Not Dan. Carlo. <laughs> and shit in the room. I said, I'm so used to calling Dan Lee champion now that I – sorry, Carlos. Latino Heat, tell us your picks for favorite Royal Rumble winners. Okay. I'm going to start with the men because the women's is a little hard for me. None of, none of the – nobody that knows the women that won the women's match that the women's Royal Rumble match I'm a little crazy about. Mm-hmm. So the men's, I'm going to have to go with John Cena in 2013 Royal Rumble match because – just because I feel like he had such a shitty year, like going through that – through before that role match, like when he, when Brock came, when he lost to The Rock, and then Brock came back and fucked him up, and then again, he lost to John Laurinaitis, Dolph Ziggler beat him, he got off, he went through all this shit, and then like, then he finally, he finally like, just like, got to the point where like, he, 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 was, he had enough, and he just like, went, went crazy and won that match, the 2013 one, and then he went on to face The Rock, and then, and then won the WWE Championship for WrestleMania. All right. I thought, I thought, I was, that was a big one, that was like one of my, I was 13 when it happened. So I was like, I went crazy. When he came well, out yeah. And I remember that match. When he came out, Michael Cole was hype. Everybody was waiting for him in the ring. And whenever John Cena comes out, they're always waiting for him. Like, ready to gang up on him. Like, come on. He's in the middle of right But it was like, the, I thought it was really good. And then he, he ended up with the Ryback to get out of, to win that match. I think Ryback, Ryback was one of the picks at the time. And Ryback was like, they were trying to put Ryback so over at the time. Ryback so. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> He's right, such a so media painting. John Cena uh, in 2013. Yeah, that's a and good one. Woman. Uh, god. Yeah, I'm mean, not crazy or anybody from. I have to choose one. I mean, I would, but I mean, you don't have to. Uh. I'm just going to say Becky. Big time bags. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> 20, 20, sorry, one of my, it's like the way that she came out, like I was her. I thought I was going to pull me. Carlos is like breaking what? up. <laughs> Oh, you're like, it's like you were breaking up. So go ahead, repeat yourself. So I was saying like like um the moment like when, when she when, when Lana got like with her and then and then she came out and then and told Billy put him in, put her in the match. I thought I thought that was really cool. And um yeah, she that was her year. Twenty nineteen was her year. Yeah, definitely. She deserved John Cena too. Deserved well, anytime John Cena is in the rumble match, he always has some kind of audience response. And 2013, he had a great year because he did take on The Rock. Not, not really. Because, like, no, no, no. I mean, I mean 2012, he, he just came out of a really shitty year. He was just coming in. Yeah. yeah. Well, John Cena is always a great pick. And, of course, I'm not going to complain about you picking Becky Lynch. It's obvious. Uh, all right. Well, here are my picks. So, for men, 
I'm going to go with Stone Cold Steve Austin from the 2001 Royal Rumble match. Austin won more than one Rumble. He won the Royal Rumble in 1997, 98, and 2001. So he's had many Royal Rumble wins. However, the 2001 Royal Rumble match was a lot of fun. And after the Royal Rumble, he went on to take on The Rock at WrestleMania 17, which everybody considers to be one of the greatest matches of all time. Had Austin not win that Rumble, he would have not taken on The Rock at Mania. And Stone Cold is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, too. So there you go. And for female, obviously, Becky Lynch. She's the man. She's big time Beck. She's my favorite. As Carlos and Dan, you guys both point out, she did have a great year following her win. And I mean, it was evident she's the second winner of the Royal Rumble match. So that just shows that she's a pioneer in the, the match. So big time Bex and Stone Cold Steve Austin are mine. We got some good picks, guys. Imagine yes, having a triple threat Stone Cold versus. John Cena versus Shawn Michaels. Holy cannoli. That would be a match. That That would be. That would be something. All right. So let's move on right along to our top five matches in Royal Rumble history. Coming at number five from 2002, the undisputed champion Chris Jericho defending the title against The Rock. Chris Jericho had just turned on The Rock and turned heel in the fall of 2001. And he ended up winning the first ever becoming. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I was trying to say winning and becoming at the same time. Becoming the first ever undisputed champion at Vengeance, defeating Stone Cold Steve Austin. And after that, he ended up having a long feud with The Rock. And these two would fight at the Royal Rumble. And Chris Jericho used whatever tactics he could to try to beat The Rock. However, the Scorpion King, the people's champion, was able to put on a valiant fight, find out who wins by watching the match. So that's our number five. And then let me pull up our number four. I'm like all out of, um, in a while. here we go. Okay. Number four. I have all my papers out of order. All right. I'm, I think you guys might've seen this one from 2007 the last man standing match for the WWE Championship. The champion John Cena defending against Umaga. This match was known for its intense and just... There was also a lot of blood if I remember correctly. Yeah, a lot of blood from Cena. Uh, There was also the moment where the, I think the rope, the turnbuckle... was was, Was this the last man standing match, right? Yeah. I agree. Was there blood in this one? I think. Was. I know in this one that the rope breaks at one point and Cena uses it to his advantage. I know that Umaga was very impressive because he's huge and he was doing a lot of like, high, not high flying, but he was definitely like running around doing a lot of stuff like that. And it was pretty violent and it did cement Cena as, you know, a big time player, although he already was. He could take a lot of John Cena could take a lot of pain, like a lot of uh, a lot of damage. Yeah. And the fans that's were why they super him. Go ahead, Dan. I said that's why they call him Super Cena. That's why uh, JBL JBL calls him Big Match John. Big match. Big John. match All right. So number three From 2015, the WWE Championship in a triple threat match, Brock Lesnar defending against John Cena and Seth Rollins. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. This is fucking awesome. Seth Rollins showed out in this match. He broke broke Brock Lesnar's rib. Hang on, Carlos. You said that Seth Rollins broke his ribs? Yeah, no, broke one of his ribs. Yeah. Oh damn. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't that when he he? I know at one point in the match he did that he elbow drop. Him. He did that elbow drop through the table. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, so that was that yeah. was that was that was. That was I mean, I think Seth Rollins is his prime now, but like that was like Seth Rollins is he, he was on he was on his game too. Yeah. He was on another level back then. He had James yeah. security, and Brock Lesnar was taken out early on in the match after like you know Carlos just said getting put. 
through a table with an elbow drop from Seth Rollins. And, you know, he didn't come back until the end. So the match was pretty much Cena versus Rollins. And it was a good match and sort of kind of was the beginning of their rivalry leading into SummerSlam that year. Later then on. Brock came, came, in the, came like towards the end, picked the bones, and then won the match. Mm -hmm. It was a great like triple threat match. It was really good. Uh, you know, any triple threat match is good, but this particular one was really great. And a lot of people consider this one to be the best triple threat match in WWE history, which, you know, could be. So definitely check that one out. We are now at our top two matches in Royal Rumble history. There has been a lot. Let's see which two make the list. All right, coming in at number two from Royal Rumble 2000, the WWE Champion Triple H defending against Mankind, well, actually Cactus Jack, in a street fight. And these two tore down Madison Square Garden. Triple H ended up really messing up his quad, I think. I don't know if it was quad or he pretty much at one point in the match, he, I don't know if he takes a pile driver or something, but he goes through like a wooden plate and a piece of wood like punctured his leg. And he fought the match. There was blood on the leg. And it was just crazy. Barbed wire, uh, just just blood everywhere. Triple H showed with this match that he is kind of able to go to that hard score, hard score, hardcore style and be, you know, the game, the dirtiest player in the game. Well, that's Ric Flair, but <laughs> I mean, he learned from Ric Flair. So, yeah, so these two had a great match. They would end up, you know, continuing the rivalry at No Way Out a month later. But this is barbaric and also rings up next to the I quit match between the rock and mankind. But I definitely understand why it made number two in our best Royal Rumble matches of all time. All right. Well, we are here. We have made it to our number one match. We have seen matches like edge versus John Cena. We've talked about Sasha Banks versus Ronda Rousey. Dina versus really, really? Sasha Banks versus Ronda Rousey. Really? Yeah, we talked about that when we went on earlier. Oh, man. man. I know, my man. There, there, there were so many great ones. It's hard to count. Dan, you were saying a couple. Yeah. I love I loved that match. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones. So, here we are at number one. From 2003. I don't know if you guys have seen this one. But if you haven't, you need to check it out. WWE champion Kurt Angle defending his title against Chris Benoit. This match has it all. If you're mm -hmm. a Submission fan, you're really going to like this one. If you are do a we, fan do we speak, of... Do we, do, we, do we speak of Chris Benoit? Well, I mean, we heard it, so why not? Yeah, I'm, okay. I, I don't agree with his like personal real life, but if you're going to... Well, he was a great wrestler. He has history. Yeah. Yes, like this match, like if, like I was saying, like if you're a technical fan, you're gonna like it. If you are a brawler fan, you're gonna like it. If you're a high flying fan, you're gonna like it. There's so many spots in this match that really made whatever type of wrestling fan you are really into it and enjoy it. These two were actually in kind of in their prime. I mean, they were only in WWE for three years at this point, and they put on a killer performance, standing ovation. And everybody that has seen it has agreed that this is probably, like I said, the greatest Royal Rumble match of all time. And I'm pretty sure you guys haven't seen it. And that is okay. Because to be honest with you, I saw it, you know, way back in 2003, but I hadn't really rewatched it until this year. So it's a great match. I definitely recommend you watching it. And that is our World of WWE podcast number one <laughs> greatest Royal Rumble match of all time. <laughs> now, this list did not come from me. This list came from a site called TheWrestlingEstate.com. And on there, they have lists. And this is their list. And I don't disagree. I think that there are a lot of well, great I matches. I think it's a good one. <clears throat> yeah. So, all right. Now, here we come. We are about to say goodbye. But before we do, we have to say our favorite Royal Rumble match of all time. You can't talk Royal Rumble without talking about the matches. And there have been so many Royal Rumble matches. Uh, some were really good. Some were really bad. Some were in between. So I want to hear from you both. We'll start with Latino Heat. Carlos, what is your favorite 
Royal Rumble match of all time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the one for the women's and one for the men's. Yeah. So okay. so for the women's, I'm gonna have to go with the very first one in 2018. I, mean, I feel like there was so much behind it, like so much pressure on women to like deliver, like like make it like so perfect, you know? Yeah. And like I remember I remember earlier that year, like it was like being like rumored that they were gonna do it, and then like and then like the 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 women started like tweeting about it, and I remember all that all that stuff. Like it's like Sasha Banks wanted it, all these people like kept on asking, like wanting it, wanting it. Then when it was like announced, it was such a big deal. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the first ever one. Okay. Uh, mm. The one that kicked it off, that kicked off it all. Yeah. Yeah. Then for the men's, mm, I feel like there has been so many good winners and like so many good like for Roman matches, but uh, my favorite Warrior Roman match is probably the 2021 or Warrior Roman 2020. Okay. Edge we're return. At yeah. No, 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 no. no. Oh, Edge didn't win. I'm sorry. I'm... When Edge returned, Drew McIntyre won. Gotcha. But, but, yeah, I feel like that match is, like, so good. I, I, I watched it back a bunch of times. Well, of course. And then, like, Brock Lesnar, Brock, Brock Lesnar starting it off, and then, like, and then he, him, like, going through everybody into, like, number what, – what number did he get eliminated at? Like, I think like it 17? was, like, up to, like – I think he lived, he eliminated everybody up to, like, 10 or something. Because I remember Kofi Kingston. Like, I remember a lot of those guys were getting just, like – I think I think it was, like – I think it was, like, 15 or 16. Yeah, that something Drew like that. Yeah. Came out, that Drew came out. And then – but, yeah, that, that – I there were so many good spots in that match. And that, that spot – that match, that overall match holds a special spot in my heart. Well, it does for me too because Edge came back, so I totally support you, Latino Heat. Yeah, that, that was that was bad, but. Mm, all right. I mean, yeah. I was I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised because like I haven't seen him in like in, like over ten years. So that 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 moment, I was like hyped, like what the fuck. But yeah. Well, thank you, Latino Heat. So the 2018 Women's Royal Rumble and the 2020 Royal Rumble match, sicko mode. All right, Lay Champion, your turn to talk, my friend. What is your favorite Royal Rumble match of all time? All right. So, my favorite – I'm going to go with the women's first again. My favorite women's Royal Rumble match is – that's a hard one. But I would probably go with the 2019 one, I think, is the one that Becky Lynch won. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Because, I mean, hey, she's my favorite yeah. winner. I got a supporter. You didn't have to go with a woman's one either, Dan. You could have just, you know, went with one too. That would, Carlos just went went with. Two. Oh, I thought we were supposed to. I thought we were supposed to go with. Oh, I thought no, we were supposed to. No, no, no. My you bad. could whichever. No, no, you're fine. That the 2019 one was good. Uh, but you go ahead. And for the men's, easily hands down, my favorite one is the 2016 men's Royal Rumble match. We oh, had no. AJ Styles debut. You had you had feuds in there, like for example, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. I think that was actually the one where uh, Sami Zayn debuted on the main roster, if I'm correct. Also on that one, you had guys like Chris Jericho in there. You had guys like Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar, if I remember correctly Dean as Ambrose. well. Dean Ambrose, Triple H. Dean Ambrose was actually the final two, right? Yeah, Dean Ambrose and Triple H were the final two. That was so, a, I remember. Yeah, that, I think it was wasn't it for like the WWE title too. Yep, Roman's title was on the line. Also, if I remember, if I remember, which I'm pretty sure I do, Art Truth ran in there, grabbed a ladder from underneath the ring, threw it in the middle of the ring, climbed to the top of the ladder, thinking it was like a Money in the Bank ladder match, and then he and then he took a bump. He took a bump that looked so nasty. Like he took a bump from the top of the ladder, fell over the top rope. And onto the ground, just like playing on the mats and everything. That looked brutal. Yeah, well, listen, that those were rumble matches are not fun. It doesn't look like it. Well, those are two good ones. Rare Rumble 2016, I remember definitely for sure because of AJ Styles. I do remember the title being on the line. 2019 was good too because Becky Lynch won. Good at picks, late champion. All right, here mm-hmm. my, here's my pick. If I had to go with women 2018 because there were just so many people to come back, it was such a nostalgia run for me. Trish Stratus, Mickey James, the Bella Twins, uh, Kelly Kelly, Michelle McCool, so many more. I can't even think. The glam was on Beth Phoenix. So many names. 
As far as the men's, I'm going all the way back to 2002 because I'm old. So many great wrestlers were in that match. You saw the return of the game Triple H, Stone Cold Steve Austin. You saw men like Kurt Angle, not Kurt Angle, yeah, Kurt Angle, Kurt Henning, the Godfather, Goldust. All the out hurricane. Coming out. Uh, also, top stars like Christian, Chris Benoit. So many great men. So many great, you know, moments in that match, too. There were just very, very cool. Triple H coming back was a huge part of that match being successful because everybody, eyes were on that one to see how well Triple H would perform after being injured in May of 2001. So, for me, growing up and still to this day, that match is one that I would watch all the time. And the 2001 is good as well. All right, so we have talked about the Royal Rumble immensely. I think I'm ready. I'm pretty sure everyone else here is ready. Royal Rumble comes to you live on January 29th, 2022. It is Saturday. It's from St. Louis, Missouri, and it is going to be huge. The way this Royal Rumble thing is being built up, it might be one of my favorite, my, might be my new favorite Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble pick of you. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, we'll have, have to, to wait and see. But I have, but don't, don't, don't let the what, what's the phrase? Um, don't let the uh, book judge. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't like don't don't um yeah yeah don't judge. There, there's another one that I was thinking about. Don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, don't, don't, Rumble, don't 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 say it's gonna be like great before you even get into it. The Royal Rumble match is is oh, always don't, yeah, don't count your eggs before the don't count your chicks yeah. before they hatch. Them. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. The Royal Rumble match is always fun, though, because you get a lot of surprises. You're like, okay, which one's coming next? You get excited. Um, I will say, yeah. can I give you a weird opinion? Sure. It sounds stupid, but I wish they would split. <laughs> like, I don't want them to do a two-night pay-per-view, but I'd rather them do, like, one night the men's Rumble and then the next night the women's. Because with them both being, that's two hours, and it's good. But after you see one, you're like, oh, okay. I'd rather have... Not really. I mean, not for me. I mean, for me, by the time the men's match happens and they get to number 10, I'm out of it. Well, I'm, really? I'm definitely going to... I'm on my feet the whole time. Like, like one, two, whatever the book. Well... Whatever happens, I'm excited. The champion has to try to defend his title, and I think he's going to lose it here. Uh, but mm, We'll see. We'll see. Continue to check out uh, the World of WWE podcast. There will be a YouTube video. Didn't our, didn't our name change? Not yet. That's happening on February 22nd, 2022, and that is going to be the Uncensored Pro Wrestling Podcast. Yeah. Oh. Get excited for that, y'all. But yeah, so stay tuned. We have, uh, we'll be having our uh, Monday Night Raw episode drop soon, and our SmackDown episode will drop next week. Check out our Raw episode that will be dropping on Monday at 3 p.m. And then our SmackDown episode should be dropping on Thursday by 6 p.m. And then we have our Royal Rumble prediction episode premiering live on, well, actually, that's going to be a little hard one. We're going to have to do that early on in the morning because it's actually Saturday. Oh, gosh, changing our schedule here. Well, that will be coming out Saturday morning. I highly doubt any changes are going to be made on Friday. However, we'll give it a day to see what happens. All right? So stay tuned. Be safe. We're excited for the Royal Rumble. And, oh, I was saying, yes, on YouTube, accompanying this podcast episode will be the list of the 30 greatest matches. You can check out the video and watch all the matches on Peacock or the WWE Network. So that will be coming up as well. All right, everybody. We talked a lot about the Rumble. Stay safe. Any last words? I hope you guys enjoy the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Sayonara. All right, guys. Be safe. We will see you soon. Bye. Bye.